Hello, and welcome back to Ontology Explained. I'm Casey Hart, philosopher and ontologist, and we're continuing our series on terms you need to know if you're representing ontologies using RDFS this time. Let's just jump right in. There are six must-haves, and we can sort of split them up into three different categories. The first two are RDFS subclass of and RDFS subproperty of. Subclass of is for setting up a hierarchy of classes. So if we have, you know, people at the top and then we have more specific classes of people such as like by occupation so we have people and then we have doctors and students and men and women right all different sorts of classifications that we could have that are subclasses of the more generic class then we have sub property and that's the same thing just on the property side so we have some relationship that is more broad and then we can split that up into its sub properties, some more specific ones. And we'll look at a few examples of those in just a minute. Then we have RDFS comment and RDFS label. These are uh, sort of for meta comments about your ontology. So the comments is where we can say, this is what I meant by this term. And label is, gives us a, a simple string that we can associate with each of the terms. And then the next two really important ones are domain and range. And these are for linking together our property with the things that go in the first and the third slot in any triples that use it. And let's go ahead and jump into the example so we can get really particular about how these things function. All right, so we're back in here in our turtle file. And this is a turtle file on Ninja Turtles. And we wanna look at the RDFS properties. I just listed them out here, subclass, sub property, comment, label, domain, and range. So let's just look at a very typical example here for Ninja Turtle. So this is our class. And this class is a subclass of turtle and person. What that means is that every instance of Ninja Turtle is also an instance of turtle and they're also an instance of person. So person and turtle are more generic. They're super classes of which Ninja Turtle is a subclass. And this comma means that there are multiple different parents of Ninja Turtle, okay? We can also see some of the other examples for RDFS here. Here's RDFS comments. And this comment just explains to us uh, what do I mean by this class? These are the class of all superhero turtles that, due to exposure to mutagen, became more humanoid and learned some martial arts. And they fight Shredder and Krang and evildoers throughout the city. Okay, now what else do we have to hit here? That's our subclass of, and that hits comments. Also, we can look at our label right there, right? RDFS label, Ninja Turtle. It just tells us the full name of Ninja Turtle, right, if we expand it, expands it using what the, this prefix is. So it's gonna be, you know, something like HTTPS so slash www dot, right, that whole thing all the way up to Ninja Turtle. That's the full name of this term. But what RDFS label does is like, okay, here's a shorthand string for us to refer to this. Labels are really useful for searching to find the terms that we want. They're also useful if we want to uh, generate some natural language outputs using our ontology. We can use the labels instead of the full URIs every time. Okay, that hits subclass, comment, label. Now let's look at some properties and that's where subproperty of domain and range is gonna show up. So I was thinking about what are some examples I might wanna use uh, properties with to talk about Ninja Turtles and make sense to me. Let's just look at that Ninja Turtles wear a mask and uh, they hold certain weapons. So how are we gonna express that? Well, we can do a property hierarchy here. We can say at the very top level we have touches and then a more specific property from touches is you're not only touching a weapon, you're using that weapon. And then also you're not only touching your mask or your shirt or your pants or whatever, you're wearing them. So how can I set up that relationship? Well, we have touches at the top and then a sub property of touches is uses weapon. And also a sub property of touches is wears. So if we wanna say that Donatello wears his mask and he uses a bow staff, right? That implies, because these are sub-properties of touches, that Donatello is touching the mask and he's touching the bow staff. That's how sub-property functions here. It gives us a hierarchy of properties, which lets us do that sort of reasoning. And then the next vocabulary we covered are domain and range, and we'll see here several different examples of that. Domain and range are incredibly simple, 
but I can't tell you how many people end up getting hung up on them by sort of misinterpreting what they mean. Every time you use a triple, right? Every time you use a property as part of a triple, like Donatello uses weapon bow staff, or Donnie's mask has color purple, right? We have has color, uses weapon, wears, these all show up as properties. That allows us to infer something about the objects that stand in that relationship. So if Donatello uses a weapon, what do we know about the thing that shows up here and the things that shows up here, right? If I gave you some random other sentence, right? And I just say that, I don't know, Casey loves Nicole. Let's say you don't know who Casey is, it's me, and you don't know who Nicole is. You already know some things about Casey and Nicole because you know how loving works. You know what the love relationship is, right? It's probably relating, you know, two persons to each other in this kind of case, or maybe it's relating a person and a food or something, right? This is what the term loves means. So if we flesh out what we mean by loves, we can say, okay, well, the loves relationship is something that holds between two people who love each other. Great. Here we say, what is the touches relationship? Well, it relates a physical thing to another physical thing. And what is the weapon relationship? It relates a person to a weapon. So if I see Donatello uses weapon bow staff, what that means is since uses weapon goes from a person to a weapon, Donatello must be a person and bow staff 01 must be a weapon. That is what is meant by domain and range. Domains say here are everything that shows up in the first place of a triple that uses this property must be one of these. So everything that stands in the subject relation to a uses weapon assertion must be a person. Everything that stands in the subject relation to wares must also be a person. So on this interpretation, we couldn't say that like a dummy was wearing a piece of clothing or something like that. No, only persons can wear clothing based on this domain assertion. And then the range is just for the object position. So we have subject, property, object. And this means since RDFS range clothing for wares, every triple with a wares property must have an instance of clothing in the last spot. Clear? I hope so. Some people make the mistake of thinking domain and range are giving you like examples that you could use. And it's not just an example. It says that everything that shows up in that slot must be one of these things. Really important difference. All right, those are our RDFS must haves. We have a few almost must haves, RDFS class. This is very similar to OWL class, but we're going to be using OWL class instead. It just has stronger semantics. So as you know, a matter of course, I think I rarely assert that anything is an instance of RDFS class in most of my daily work. RDFS resource is a really important class. It's sort of the top level thing. Everything else ends up being a resource, uh, which is really important. RDFS literal is a sub set or a subclass of resources. Those are like strings, dates, things like that. But in practice, I find that I'm rarely making direct assertions using those terms. So while they're nice to know, I don't think you'll actually use them that often. RDFSC also is a little different. That's just a pointer that says, hey, if you want to learn about this thing, maybe go look at this other thing. I actually use that pretty frequently. So if I'm representing something, I might do an RDFSC also and then put like the web address for its Wikipedia page uh, or uh, some other page where the thing is defined as like, here's a good reference for you to go to if you want to understand what I was talking about in that particular case. But again, you don't have to use that one. So I just put it on the almost must haves. And that's it. Go practice. We got a lot more vocabulary on this one than we did for just RDF, where we just had RDF type. There's a lot more things to use. Go back through this video, try and build your own ontology using those examples. And then uh, up next, we're going to talk about OWL. And with that, with RDF, RDFS, and OWL, that's all you'll need to make some pretty cool ontologies. See you soon.